The next one we're going to do is a quarter inch tip sleeve to male RCA cable. So we're going to inventory the parts here, and again, manufacturer styles will vary a little bit, but we're still going to have the same basic components here. We're going to have the connector itself, we're going to have the shell, we're going to have the boot that goes on the back, and this part's going to be the strain relief. Actually, this is going to fit together like a half shell arrangement when we all put it back together. And again, like other connectors, you'll see the serrations here. We want to make sure that our jacket, our outside jacket, is going to come up underneath the serrations here. So that gives us an idea of how that's going to go together. All right, let's go ahead and begin preparing our cable here. So let's get our cable, and let's go ahead and put the boot on it. I could have stripped these back, but I'll save that for just a moment. We'll go ahead and put that on, and we'll also use some heat shrink. And I want to make sure that when all this is together, the heat shrink comes past the boot, like we do on other connectors, provide a little strain relief. So we'll go ahead and clip that off. Now we could use various colors of heat shrink, and that's okay. One of the things that we do here in class is use clear heat shrink so that we can see everything that we're doing. All right, so we know this is going to go together, and I can get an idea of how long or how much conductor I can strip off here as I do a little test fit. So I can strip off probably about that much jacket. So let's go ahead and remove that. Use the universal strippers here. And a lot of times I'll just take a slight cut here, release, turn it slightly, and then bring the stripper on this part and I'll actually pull the jacket off. And we'll go ahead and remove this little piece of nylon here. And this cable construction, again, we'll find our drain wire outside of the shield. And we'll go ahead and make sure that these are twisted together. And then we'll go ahead and remove the foil shield. And this didn't pull off, the outside jacket didn't pull off real easy. So I'm going to take a real close look at the conductors in this one to make sure that I didn't nick the outside jackets. And sometimes this doesn't tear off very easily. So I'll actually give it a little help here by just clipping the foil shield slightly. There we go. All right, so I want to make sure when I remove that outside jacket, I didn't inadvertently nick the jackets on the individual conductors, and it looks okay. All right, how many conductors do we have here? Well, we have two inside conductors and a drain wire. Wait a minute, as I take a look at the connector here, I only have two places to make a connection. So I actually have more conductors here than what I need. Well, I can still use this twisted pair, um, and I'm going to go ahead and use the red and drain to make the connection. Well, what do I do with the black? Well, I could do a couple of things here. I could trim it off. However, if this ever changes, the piece of equipment changes, or I need to go to a different connector in the future, well, then maybe I'm going to need that black wire for that different piece of gear or connector. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold the black wire back, and when I bring the heat shrink up, it's going to go underneath the heat shrink. So that's going to leave me with the drain, and the red conductor. So how do we do our trim here? Well, the shield is going to go down in the bottom of this connector, so that gives me an idea. Okay, I can even shorten these up a little bit, can't I? So we're going to go ahead and shorten a little more. Put that off to the side. And we can get an idea as we test fit this into the cup for the tip, how much jacket we're going to be removing for that. So I'll go ahead and bring that out and remove the jacket from that conductor and just give it a little test fit again. I want to make sure this drain wire stays twisted, by the way. So as we land that in, it looks like that's going to fit. And I can actually trim off that drain wire some, couldn't I? So we're going to trim off just a little bit of that. And we're going to land the drain wire first, and then we're going to come in and land the center conductor. So that's what we're going to look like. Let's go ahead and finish, since we have the cable here in our hand, let's go ahead and go ahead and tin the center conductor as well as the drain wire. So we're going to put this in our little vise, just to hold it. I'm going to take my iron out of the holder. I'm going to clean it off with a sponge, and then I'm going to add some solder to the tip in the tip. I'm going to take the iron behind the conductor itself and just tin the tip of it. Again, I don't want to tin all the way down on the drain wire because I'll lose my flexibility. I'll go ahead and tin this conductor here. There. 
All right, clean the iron off, put a little more solder back on the tip, and put it back in the holder. Okay, so our cable's prepared. Let's go ahead and prepare our connector. Like some of the other connectors that we've done, we're gonna go ahead and put some solder here in the cup, and we're also gonna put some down here in the bottom as well. All right, so we take the iron out of the holder, clean it off in a sponge, make sure that it doesn't get caught up in the tools here. And we're gonna add some solder back to the tip after we've cleaned it off. So I'm gonna lay the soldering iron across the top of the cup here, and I'm gonna flow the solder into the cup. And we wanna fill the cup, not to overflowing, just about like that. All right, I'm gonna turn this slightly so I can get a better angle here with the soldering iron. And I'm going to put a little bit of solder down on the very bottom. And this is where we're going to land the shield. So I'm going to touch the solder to the material. You can see it flows. All right. So I'm going to turn it back around here just a little bit. And we're going to land our shield first because that's at the bottom. Be sure as you move things around here that you actually don't touch the connector because we've just put 700 degrees to it, things can be a little warm. So we wanna make sure we keep our fingers clear. We'll use a little bit of the very small heat shrink and we'll put that over the drain wire. You can see that's a little long. So I'll shorten that up some. And we'll put it back over the drain wire. And again, I wanna make sure that things are gonna work well. I'll shorten that up just a tad. Because I really don't want the heat shrink contacting the solder. All right. So that's what we're going to look like. Whoops. Let's get our heat shrink back off there. There we go. All right. We clean off our iron. Make sure we have some solder applied to the tip. That'll help our heat transfer. And we'll go ahead and land the shield. We're gonna get the material hot, and then we can flow the shield connection right in. We wanna make sure it looks like a nice flow, and then we're gonna let it cool down. And again, try not to move it while it cools. So that's the first part. Again, just making sure our iron stays clean and tinned. And here, I can pre-position this just a little bit, so as I flow the solder, I can work that right into the cup. Iron comes out of the holder. We tin it up, and this should go rather quickly. Remove the heat from it, let it cool. And that's our quarter inch. Okay, cleaning up the iron, tinning the tip, and putting it back in the holder. So that's what we have so far. I mentioned they get a little hot, and they do. As I put this together, I wanna to make sure the black wire comes up underneath the heat shrink so that I can use it in the future if need be. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the heat gun over and go ahead and shrink this down. All right, so that's what we have so far. This particular uh, strain relief has a little slot, so I can put this on at basically any point, and it's gonna fit like that against the other part, kind of like a clamshell arrangement here. And I can go ahead and get the body of the connector, put it on from the front, and it's gonna slide all the way down. And you can see here the jacket is indeed underneath the, uh, the strain relief. I can bring the boot up, go ahead and finish the assembly. 
So we have adequate heat shrink coming out the back to help this transition point, and there's our quarter inch tip sleeve. Okay, so we've done our quarter inch tip sleeve, and next we'll do our RCA on the other end of this cable. So we're gonna go ahead and open the package here. Put our knife back in the holder. Open the package and see what we have for parts here. We're gonna find a couple different things. We're gonna find two different size little uh, string reliefs here that go out the back. We're gonna find the connector itself. We're gonna find the strain relief, and this is actually the shell. The way this is gonna to go together is kind of like a half shell or clamshell arrangement here. And like many other connectors, there are little serrations here in the back. And for me to be able to test fit this or get an idea of how much jacket I'm gonna strip back, I wanna make sure that outer jacket of the cable is actually gonna be under that strain relief. So I'm not gonna be removing too much jacket in this case as this goes in. So not a whole lot of jacket. So let's go ahead and prepare our cable here. Uh, we're gonna need a couple of things. Now I mentioned there were two different little strain reliefs here and two different sizes. Which one would I use? Well, I'm dealing with a very small diameter cable, so I'm gonna use the smaller of the two little springs. And the way this is gonna to go together is the spring is actually gonna fit inside the shell here and come out the back. And then when we assemble it, the RCA connector itself is actually gonna screw, or the shell is actually gonna screw onto the connector itself. So we're gonna go ahead and put this assembly on our cable. And then like everything else that we're gonna do, we're gonna put some heat shrink on. And then we can begin to strip back the jacket. Now one of the things, as we begin to test fit this assembly here, is I wanna make sure that the jacket is under the serrations here for the strain relief. So really in this particular case, I'm not gonna be removing much jacket. I can do a couple of different things here. Uh, I can, to make things a little easier, go ahead and remove a little more jacket than I need to, and then I can cut the conductors to length. So we're gonna pull off the outer jacket. We can see the nylon here. and clip that off and away. Here's our drain wire, and we'll go ahead and twist that together. Here's our foil shield that we're gonna remove. And that came off pretty easily. Okay, but now we have three conductors. Well, actually two conductors and a drain, more properly. But I only have a place for two conductors here on the connector itself. So I'm gonna use my red and my drain wire. What do I do with the black? Well, if for whatever reason the connector changes in the future or the piece of gear or both changes, I may need that black wire in the future. I could cut it off, but for changes later on, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this back. And what's gonna happen later on when we bring our heat shrink in is it's actually gonna go beneath the heat shrink. So if we ever modify the system later on, that conductor will be there and ready for us. All right, so I have my drain wire and my conductor, and I know the drain wire is gonna land down here in the bottom. So really, I can begin trimming things to about that length there. Keeping my finger over the other side of the cutter so I don't have pieces flying unexpectedly. And the shield's gonna go down below, and that looks pretty close there, doesn't it? So how much of this jacket do I strip off? Well, as I put it in the cup, I find that I'm gonna be taking about that much jacket off. So let's go ahead and take that off. And I can actually trim the drain wire up a little bit too. All right, let's finish preparing our wire here by tinning these leads. Make sure that's twisted together well. So we're gonna put this in the vise to hold it. We'll take the iron out of the holder, clean it with the sponge, and again, tin the tip. And that's just the rosin flux, that's what the smoke's from. So we're gonna put the iron to the back of the conductor and flow the solder onto the wire. And we'll do it for both. Okay, so our wire is ready. Let's go ahead and prepare our conductor. I'm sorry, prepare our connector. We've done the conductor, haven't we? 
Now I'm gonna work from bottom up here. So I'm gonna land some solder here down in the bottom and then I'm gonna put some solder here in the cup. So we clean our iron. We tin the tip. Oh, let's go ahead and do the cup first. I'm laying the iron across the cup and then just putting the solder in the cup itself. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom part here. Now that slipped on me a little bit. Okay, make sure the iron is clean and tinned. And now we can go ahead and begin to assemble the conductor. That's gonna land down at the bottom and then we're gonna put the red in the cup. We clean off our iron, make sure the tip is tinned, and we're gonna go ahead and begin with the shield connection. We're gonna lay that in the bottom and let it cool and not move it as it cools. And now I'm gonna pre-position the center conductor here a little bit so as I get the solder in the cup hot, I can just work it right on in. So I'm putting a little bit of a bend into it so I can land it in the cup. All right, take our iron out of the holder Tin it up slightly, and let's see if we can finish our termination here. Work it in, keep it still as it cools. Make sure our iron is cleaned and tinned before we put it back in the holder. We can go ahead and bring the heat shrink up now, and we'll cover the black conductor with that. bring our heat gun over. Let's go ahead. Let's finish our assembly. Let's see, where'd our barrel go? Should be on our cable already. And it slid down a little ways here. Here's our little half shell. And that's gonna fit together just like that. So we bring up our strain relief. And you can see here, this is actually conical inside here and it's gonna fit up against that strain relief. And let's bring the, sometimes these shells, little shells slide all the way down the cable. So we're gonna bring it up and over and just screw it together like that. And that's our RCA connection. Now we've done our RCA and we've completed our tip sleeve quarter to RCA, also known as phono connector cable. And before we put it in our installation, we'll go ahead and test it and we'll be good to go.